It is Saturday, the 18th of February, and this is Love Notes, Daily Devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Welcome. We begin the 14th chapter of Matthew in our devotions today. It begins with King Herod, the ruler of the area that Jesus is in. Now, this isn't Herod the Great, who was the ruler in Jerusalem at the time of the Magi and the birth of Jesus. This is one of his sons who is now ruling a part of the area that's been given to him by the Romans. This Herod has a brother named Philip, and they play into this story a little bit together. It says, at the time that Herod the ruler heard reports about Jesus, what he was doing, what he was saying, he said to himself and his servants, this is John the Baptist, he's been raised from the dead, and for this reason, these powers are at work in him. Herod has heard about Jesus. We know about hearing being a, a way into the kingdom, but he hasn't heard rightly. He thinks it's John the Baptist because, well, maybe of a guilty conscience. And then the story unfolds about what's happened to John, the cousin of Jesus, who was thrown into prison. So, Herod had him arrested originally because John had a nasty habit of making public people's foibles and failings. Herod had gotten involved with his brother Philip's wife and eventually married her. And apparently that was a no-no. It's still a no-no. It's at least in bad taste and probably illegal in some situations. And John had said, as a man of God, this is wrong. This is adultery. This is absolutely not what God wills. And by doing that, he had enraged Herod and his wife. So John was arrested and thrown into prison, but Herod did not kill him because the crowd loved John, and he didn't want to get crosswise with the crowd. He didn't want problems because of this. So he just kept him in jail. Now, Herod had a birthday party, and there was lots of food and lots of drink, I imagine. As a matter of fact, there was probably some drunkenness involved, and all sorts of things are going on to celebrate. Uh, Herod is surrounded by the rich and the powerful and all the people that he likes and all those people who he has to be nice to, you know, how it might be. During the party, Herodias, who is his daughter, now by Philip's former wife, does a dance, and it so greatly pleases him and all the crowd that he says to her, I'm thinking maybe with a little alcohol in his system, I will give you anything that you name in thanksgiving for this beautiful dance that you've given me. Just name it and it's yours. I'll give you my kingdom and it's yours. So she goes and she consults with her mother. And Herodias, who hates John the Baptist even more than Herod does, because he's called her an adulteress, says, bring me the head of John the Baptist on a plate. Well, Herod's bummed out about this because he's going to have to now kill John. Otherwise, he'd look bad in front of his friends. He would lose favor in front of the powerful. In other words, it's not a question of what the right thing and the wrong thing is. It's not a question of hearing that maybe this guy has something to do with Jesus. No, instead, Herod sends for him, and right there in his prison cell, they chop off his head and put it on a plate. It's rather gruesome and gory. They present it to the daughter, who gives it to her mother, and it just makes you kind of feel warm and fuzzy in the heart, doesn't it? These are some evil people. It tells us then that the disciples of John came and took the body and buried it, and then they went and told Jesus what had happened. What we should be remembering in this story is a couple of things. First off, remember way back at the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus has said, blessed are the persecuted. Blessed are the ones who are persecuted for my sake. You will receive the kingdom of heaven. You will have your reward. John has been persecuted exactly for that, and the assurance is that he will receive God's reward. The second thing we should note 
is this foreshadows what is to happen to Jesus. Jesus, too, is going to be sacrificed up on the cross because powerful officials don't have the guts to do the right thing and want only to do the popular thing. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, the coming of your kingdom threatens those in power. It threatens those of us who aren't in power. Lord, sometimes we act evilly. We do awful things in the name of our faith, in the name of our country, in the name of our honor. And so we miss out on the kingdom of God. We remember today the martyr John the Baptist and all those who've died in the persecution of the church and the faith, knowing that you bless each and every one of them, and we ask your blessing upon us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.